Hi guys, uh, Thierry here, also known as Video Demon, and today we're doing another album review. I haven't done one in a long time. I can't even remember. It was probably it was probably on Loco back in like August, but I feel like doing another one. But you know, we're gonna make some changes. Uh, this review is gonna be a little more. Um, how should I say? It? Uh, unscripted and abridged. So, I haven't made notes, I'm kind of just going to, I listened to the album, like, loads of times, and recently, but I'm going to use memory in this one, <laughs> and we'll see how that goes. I'm just doing this video in the meantime, because there will be more university projects uploaded to the channel, which, you know, I know you guys like seeing those. And uh, before I start the review, I also want to just make a quick plug. Uh, me and my friend Antman95 recently did a vocals and drum cover of uh, Withered by Atom Ship, dedicated to Joey Culver, who sadly passed away at the end of 2020. Uh, so I sing in it, and he plays the drums. So I'm going to put that in the description, so you can all watch that. Give it a like, subscribe to his channel, comment, favorite it, do all that good stuff. So, anyway, let's start the review. Today, we'll be taking a look at an album I've wanted to do for a while. It is The Greyest of Blue Skies by Finger Eleven. Now, why did I decide to why did I decide to do this one? Because severely underrated, Finger Eleven are kind of a band that's been sadly mislabeled uh, because of meme culture. Their song to their song from 2007, Paralyzer. I think you all know it, aka the Quag My Attention to a Toilet song. <laughs> I could probably just play it here. <laughs> but yeah, uh, yeah, Paralyzer, because it was uh, used a lot in the early days of YouTube, it's become a bit of a meme, like <laughs> in later years, to kind of represent the, uh, the, the, the old days of like primitive YouTube. And now it's the song that's used when Quagmire from Family Guy turns into a toilet. But sadly, because of that song, Finger Eleven are regarded as like a one-hit wonder. Or if it's not Paralyzer, people just think of the song One Thing off of the self-titled album from 2003, which I am going to review at some point because that is a very good album. But people often forget that these guys were an actual band that really put out quality songs. Because Paralyzer is a banger. But in more of the ironic sense, you know, the lyrics are kind of cheesy and it feels like your typical, like a post grunge song mixed with an indie rock song from the 2000s. It's, it, it's silly, but we love it. But people often forget that Finger Eleven were like a real band who actually put out some quality, releasing, I'd, I'd arguably say, masterpiece albums. This album is brilliantly dark. It's a hidden gem. It's probably the best new metal album that you've never heard. And I want to review it. But we'll do a little bit of history first. So Finger Eleven came from Canada. They originated, I can't remember the year they were formed. Probably like early 90s. Probably 1995. But they started off as the Rainbow Butt Monkeys. Yeah, I'm not even kidding you. That was their name. And they did funk, rock, kind of Red Hot Chili Peppers style music. A little bit more silly than their later work. And yeah, thank God they changed their name. But in 1997, they released their proper debut album with the new name, Tip. Now, Tip was uh, also, I think it was reissued in 1998 under like Wind Up Records. So like a more major label debut, you know. It was, it was a, yeah, it was signed onto a label. But yeah, Tip was like very post-grunge. Uh, those kind of like distorted guitars, but with a very melodic kind of feel to it. Uh, very similar to the actual early, the proper grunge bands in the early 90s. It's, it's a hidden gem as well, but I don't have a physical copy of it. Uh, some of the best songs on it were uh, Above and uh, Quicksand. Uh, Awake and Dreaming is a really... Uh, emotional one like a tearjerker uh gutter ball i think was the name of one of the songs uh yeah it, it was really good anyway great album as well but i personally need a copy of it but in 2000 
they completely changed direction. They ditched the kind of post grunge aesthetic and turned into a more gothic kind of look with uh, their second album in 2000, The Greatest of Blue Skies. So they went from post grunge to straight up new metal, meaning the guitars got a lot more distorted, similar to Korn's albums, a lot more very deep sounding, very like creepy sounding, a lot of uh, uh, a lot of weird kind of like sounding guitars in the mix, arguably more depressing and more darker lyrics, and just the whole aesthetic. I mean, let's look at the album cover. This was actually painted by a guy called Jeff Ferber. Uh, it's a really beautiful oil painting of uh, a marionette puppet with no real kind of features on it, just f on the ground, lifeless. And it's, it could be like, kind of like, um, I don't know what you'd say, you know, uh, progressive, I guess. And say it kind of represents how, like, we're all controlled, like puppets. You know what I mean? But it's just really cool looking. And on the back as well, there's another painting, but the puppet is now on the strings. Uh, and all the songs are written in oil painting. I just love the whole aesthetic. Uh, the CD actually has uh, the, I don't know what you call that, the thing that, um, the puppeteer controls and the puppet is on a giant puppet's hand and uh, you can also see the band members were definitely going for an edgy kind of look in the darkness it's kind of crazy these were the same guys that did the quagmire song quagmire toilet song so, all memes aside this album is brilliant and i'm gonna go into why but i will note guys before you decide to check out this album if you're going through things personally you know depression maybe this album isn't the one for you because some of these songs can be straight up tear jerkers and the whole atmosphere of this album is just very very dark and very low-key but it's why i loved it and it got me through a lot of times also i got the cd from ebay about two years ago so i haven't had it that long but yeah and actually it wasn't available on streaming services until about october last year where they finally put it on spotify uk so the cd was actually the only option i had but it's available on streaming services now so that's all good and after this album they did finger 11 self-titled in 2003 which has more of a kind of radio rock kind of feel the guitars are a lot more cleaner sounding and uh, the songs tend to be a bit more romantic and a little bit more uplifting than this one but let's get into it let's just like we've gone through the history let's talk about it uh track number one first time very fitting title uh starts off with some very creepy kind of crawling riffs and then a very catchy just has a very like loud and kind of pounding aggressive kind of feel to it and uh the lyrics uh, it's funny because like the 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 chorus is actually quite uh, bombastic and loud, but the verses are very like creepy sounding like I have never felt we were hanging off while the drums is just simply just the bass drum just just pumping just like and it just kind of has that whole tempo to it just like very um creepy sounding uh, not to be cheesy but I think these songs would definitely fit in a kind of like dark anime so yeah, but First Time is an excellent song. The music video is a little bit weird though. It's got like some kid getting bullied with like a with like a naked lady covered in like clay. She's got like grey skin. She's like emerged from the mud. It's really weird, but yeah. And another thing I was going to mention as well. Uh, I don't remember the band members members names except Scott Anderson, but he uh, he has an excellent voice. He's one of my biggest inspiration with the kind of way he sings he uses a lot of like falsetto like it feels like the first time and he he's very melodic and beautiful i was going to say even though this is a new metal album in all sense of the word there isn't any hip-hop vibes on this one this is one of the more alternative sounding ones and he doesn't scream a lot on this one as well it's like mostly purely singing but with aggressive instruments so yeah his voice is really nice and i think he was also the inspiration for adam gontier from Three Days Grace, who sadly has left the band years ago now. But yeah, first time, excellent song. And also, this song was famous for being featured in the Dragon Ball Z movie, Lord Slug. There was actually two DBC movies that had Finger Eleven songs on it. 
from this album, but we'll talk about it. Uh, yeah, I've never seen Lord Slug, but apparently it was only in the original Funimation one from the 2000s. I think later on they just added normal Dragon Ball Z music, because there was all kinds of bands. There was Drowning Pool, there was Disturbed, there was Dust for Life. Um, Black Pearl was another one. American Pearl, I think they were called. Um, yeah, they, they were just full of metal songs. Metal and rock songs in the old DBZ movies. Very cool. Track number two, Drag You Down, starts with some like very cool, um, very kind of creepy, very corn-esque. It kind of sounds like a musical box. Like, boom, ba -dum, ba -dum. And then the drums kick in. The snare drums as well are like very loud on this album, which is also a trait in new metal. And then it just kicks into a very loud, very aggressive, very funky as well. It keeps the funk. This album as darker as it feels. And the chorus has like a nice bass line. And the lyrics, it's biting, it's crawling, it's teething, I'm bleeding. The perfect sound of middle ground. Pull me under before I try to drag you down. Yeah, the lyrics are kind of on the generic side, like being pulled under and like being dragged down, I guess. But it still works effectively. And the chorus is very punchy. It kind of feels like being punched in the face, kind of in like musical form. So yeah, Drag You Down. I think this song was also in Lord Slug as well. And that one had a music video. The music video is a little bit like early 2000s. I don't want to say cringe, but it's very dated with the outfits they're wearing. They look very gothic looking. This was the edge era of the band. I'd say the emo era, but yeah. Drag You Down was like the most famous song off this one. Great song. Track number three, My Carousel. Kind of a disappointment compared to the other two, but it keeps the kind of creepy kind of feel to it. Like, um, and it has very, it, it feels a little bit more low key, this kind of song. And the lyrics, I'm tired of this place. I want to go ride on my carousel. Like, they will never tell. And I think this song is about kind of like shutting away your problems and just going back to kind of a happy place, which would be a carousel. You know, one of those spinny things with the horses that you ride. Now, those are always used in kind of a Horace kind of setting because they're very vintage looking carousels. And they can be seen as very like creepy and good for horror aesthetics. So the song is effective there, but it kind of feels like filler. But if it wasn't on the album, I think it kind of like wouldn't fit the tone. You know, it would kind of miss the tone. So it is still a good song. Yeah. Track number four, Sick of It All, with absolutely no relation to the punk band of the same name. Sick of It All starts with, are oh, the sins getting staler? Does every moment feel empty? Does it feel like forever? And shouldn't you be lasting too? And like, take a look where they found you. Take a look what they've done to you now. That, that bit as well, like it starts off very like creepy and kind of those musical box kind of guitars, but then it just, the chorus goes immediately into the heavy really good bass line as well on that bit. But like, I'm so sick of it all. The chorus is actually very beautiful, surprisingly. As heavy as the instruments are, the singing is very melodic and beautiful, which is fitting for Finger Eleven. This song as well, it reminds me a lot of the song they would do that was Kane's theme song, the wrestler Kane, uh, Slow Chemical. Uh, what else did they do as well? That song was also on the Punisher 2004 album as well, so great song. But yeah, sick of it all, it feels very emotional, and the pre-chorus kind of has a weird effect with the vocals, like... <laughs> like, it kind of feels like he's struggling to sing, which kind of fits the, the struggling kind of nature of the song. Sick of it all, the title is pretty blatant on what it's about, so yeah. Absolutely fab song. Amazing song. Number five, For the Ocean. For the Ocean is probably like the shortest song on the album. It's only like two and a half minutes long. It's one of the more aggressive songs, but it's like, you know, it uses a lot of metaphors as well. Like, I'm waiting for the ocean to save me from the waves. And there's a lot of metaphors on this one about water in particular, which we're going to get to later on. But For the Ocean is kind of one of the more heavy, kind of like in-your-face kind of songs. Uh, the vocalist as well does a lot of <sighs> kind of groans. He doesn't scream on this album, but he does groan, which fits to the more alternative metal, new metal kind of feel this one has. So, Sick of It All does a good job. 
but you know it's one of the more forgettable songs number six broken words another ballad on the album it starts off with some kind of kind of really creepy kind of like i mentioned that a lot this album is very much a vibe but the first song the, it, the song starts off with some kind of like unintelligible kind of talking that just kind of sounds like like clicking and then it goes into a very somber kind of very somber sounding guitar playing and like sweet little hands i bite when i don't want to beg everything she meant to me in the chorus she's the one who saw my words broken torn at the seams and uh, there's a lot of falsetto and broken words are wrong she has now she's walking away from me yeah uh this song's definitely a breakup song with obviously mentioned she definitely a female character in the song it definitely is very slow sounding this one very slow and song but very you know mid-tone uh, vibes to it yeah very sad song guys i'm not gonna lie broken words sums it up really well it's a great song, but sad. And uh, Broken Words immediately ends with some, like, cymbals clashing and then some more really weird kind of beeping sounds. Whoa, 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 whoa. And then it transitions into track seven, Suffocate. Suffocate is another song that was quite famous, not because of Dragon Ball Z, but it was included in the soundtrack for Scream 3, the horror movie Scream 3. Um... I don't know if it was in the movie, I've never seen the film, but it was on the soundtrack album. And it was also known because Slipknot, when Slipknot was getting big, they only had their 1999 album out at the time. But in 2000, fans basically made a bootleg called Clan, which had a picture of a clown's face on it. Maybe, I don't know, the clown in the band. But uh, one of the songs on it, I actually forgot the title of it, but it was blatantly a recording of, of Suffocate. And a lot of people for years and years, because of LimeWire and Napster, thought this song was a Slipknot song. I personally don't hear it. I think the vocals are too soft to be Corey Taylor's. But yeah, Suffocate is really good. And it has more of a kind of like creeping kind of feel. It has more of like a shifty kind of feel. Like, talk to me. And would you listen to me now? Do you understand? Do you identify? And then the chorus is like, suffocate, slaughter me, covered so I can breathe. Yeah, this is one of the violent songs on the album. Like, you know, like songs about like choking and like suffocating somebody and forcing you down and strapping you in. That kind of makes me think of images of like kind of like experimentation on somebody. Those kind of unethical vibes. It definitely feels like that. And it fits a horror movie as well. Suffocate as well also is probably one of the most overused like titles for a new metal track but yeah this song is great and it has the vibe and then that song leads into bones plus joints it's literally spelt with a plus symbol on it it's not but yeah bones and joints bones bones plus joints is another ballad and it starts off very somber it kind of sounds almost acoustic feeling and it feels very low-key but like bow my eyes and tell me what to see Cause I'm falling and I can't see right. And the actual chorus kind of has a um it kind of has a chant kind of feel like I've been down here before, lost myself and so much more. Find my way out of the wreck again. Yeah, Bones and Joints is another song which I feel is about like depression. It's like falling down but getting your way out of the wreckage. It's very inspiring actually. But the pre, uh, the the uh, the middle section of the album has like a very somber kind of feel. Like you you lost what made you you and made me an enemy. I can't stay here anymore. Give me all of my life away, which kind of feels like another breakup kind of thing again. Moving away from a problem, and then that translate then that turns into an absolutely beautiful part where the guitar just kind of plays on its own without drums, and Scott Anderson starts going like. But I like it. Dum, 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 dum. And after that, like, short little bit, it just goes back into the chorus again and gets heavy. Yeah, this song is beautiful. And I think it also did have a music video uh, where they're driving around in cars and, like, a motorway at nighttime. Very strange, but 
Yeah, and the lyrics as well, you lost what made you, you kind of think about like modern Finger Eleven, how they basically became a pop rock band shortly after, which is kind of sad, but yeah. This song, very emotional, extremely emotional. Uh, next song is Famous, uh, absolutely nothing to do with Famous Last, I think it's called Famous Last Words, which is a song off of their album Life is Electric, which was a crap album, by the way, released in 2010. But Famous starts off very slowly and kind of like, there's a lot of like effects on the guitars on this album, guys, like studio effects, like, and it kind of sounds like a cry for help, this one, this song, like, all I wanted from you, you know. All I want from you, my dear friend, I won't ever know. I could show you how. It's kind of like a message to a friend, this one. And the funny thing is that the, the word famous isn't actually in the chorus, but it is in the middle section where he said, like, you were famous, important, don't you stop that glitter, which is a really weird lyric. But yeah, I think this is, this song is about the consequences of fame. And it used to be one of my favourite songs on the album because it was one of the more emotional ones. But yeah, Famous is also beautiful. Uh, number 10, we get only two more songs to go, guys. Walking In My Shoes, which is a cover of Depeche Mode, a band that I've never listened to or never cared to check out. I did listen to it after listening to this version and like it sounds very 80s and synthy and it's nice that Finger Eleven did their kind of like own metal version of the song walking in my shoes you stop all in my footsteps so if you had any conclusion try walking in my shoes they did a really effective cover of this and i think you can enjoy it without having any knowledge of the original song it's really good and uh, it fits the album as well like the the lyrics like about like literally like trying to put your mindset in another person's problems which is very fitting for the album as well. Good decision to cover it. So yeah, Walking In My Shoes is good. And the final song, track 11, Stay and Drown. I'm straight up going to say it, guys. This song is depressing. It's another ballad, but I'm not going to lie, guys. It doesn't make me react this way anymore, but this was one of the few songs that actually would make me cry and like bring me to tears. And I would listen to this song in a lot of times when I felt sad and just kind of lonely with my problems in the world. Stay and Drown definitely has that feel. It starts up with some kind of like creepy kind of kind of disturbing like it sounds like wailing almost like Ooh, and then that, then uh, that leads God that scared the hell out of me. That leads into a uh, depressing kind of guitar riff. Dum, dum, da, dum. It's very atmospheric and there's also like noises in the background as well, which like the wailing I said before and the lyrics, the singing is also very like low key, but the verses like and the chorus like, like take my hand in the deepest end. Would you stay and drown with me? There's also that like stay and drown in me kind of the uh, falsetto high pitch kind of feel, which fits the depressing nature of the song. But the lyrics of this song are quite literally like, take my hand in the deepest end, would you stay and drown in me? It's kind of a love song. It's like, when you love someone so much, you would like literally drown with them. Which is like I said before, for the ocean goes back into the water kind of metaphors. So, you know, this paradise was nothing else, but the paradigm gets tired of you. So the the verses are very thought provoking as well. And then the the... Pre-chorus is the middle section of the song is actually quite like heavy, but it kind of feels emotionally devastating at the same time. It feels like a very like mood swing kind of song, and then my open eyes see everything, but you see nothing, and don't forget that. That's a really good lyric as well, and he he kind of like yells it out in desperation. It's very cry for help. This song. And then the chorus plays out again, and then the song just ends with a really, like, with an atmospheric kind of, like, wail, and then that just fades into literal static, just, and then the album just ends abruptly. And that's it. That's the album. 
No bonus tracks, no nothing. Just ends on static. Very similar to the final song on uh, Korn's Issues album as well. So, yeah. Stay and Drown, very depressing song, very sad note to end the album on. I feel the static as well kind of makes me think of like somebody like literally drowning and as they lose breath, the song would play out. Which, as morbid as that sounds, that's just my imagination for you. <laughs> so, yeah. Very depressing final track. And I've noticed a lot of new metal albums tend to like end on sadder songs. Like Disturbed had Darkness with Believe. And uh, Chevelle had um, One Lonely Visitor and Wonder What's Next. There's a lot of albums that end with sad songs, and this is definitely one of them, but Stay and Drown is beautiful. And I think it was also in the Dragon Ball Z movie Cool as Revenge, which came out around the same time. I don't remember the scene it was in, though. I think it was, like, one of the sadder scenes. It wasn't one of the fight scenes. But, yeah, that's it, guys. That was the greatest of Blue Skies. Overall, I would give this album easily a 9. The only reason I'm not going to give it a 10 is because... Some of the tracks is about two or three songs that aren't as aren't as good and aren't as memorable, but they're still amazing in their own right. So I give this album a really good score. Easily a 9 out of 10 album. And next time, if you want me to check out Tip and the self-titled album, eh, maybe Them versus You versus Me, whatever it was called, the, the album with Paralyzer on it, let me know. But anyways, that's it, guys. Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed my video, and there'll be more album reviews to come, but there'll be university projects first, so yeah, definitely check this album out if you like new metal and darker music in general, I really recommend it. More album reviews to come. Peace out guys.